Welcome back to the Resiliency Ninja Podcast. This is Allison Graham, and today I am recording this episode and releasing it on International Women's Day. So whenever you're listening to it, just uh, a throwback to March 8, 2019. This is such an important day for celebrating women across the globe and all of the advances that we've met. And of course, we still have a long way to go. And I I think that it's definitely worth celebrating. But what I wanted to do today is I wanted to talk about three simple ways that you can continually, not just today, but all 365 days until we come back to the next International Women's Day, celebrate and support other women in the workplace. So just some really simple things. And then I want to read from my book, Married My Mom, Birth the Dog, How to Be Resilient When Life Sucks. Uh, Just a couple paragraphs that I wrote about that really fit in with the theme of today. So let's see, three different ideas, simple things that you can do, although they're, they're simple, they're easy, but is not always happening. <laughs> so, so let's uh, go with this. First one is to make an effort to celebrate and acknowledge other women's successes. I think sometimes we get so focused on worrying about our own success and then when somebody else is succeeding, we, we have the sense that their success could diminish our potential for success. And that's not the case. When everybody grows and succeeds and you celebrate that, then you are going to continue to grow and succeed. And even if somebody else in your office got the promotion and you wanted to be that person or uh, got a a specific client or or just something happened, still celebrate her success because there'll be something else coming down the road for you. So recognize that another person's success does not diminish your potential for your success. That's the first one. Second, don't gossip negatively about someone else. And it's unfortunate because some women are still in that, you know, the catty phase or, oh, look at what she's wearing and all of that, you know, drama that we see on reality TV shows. That's not how you can really earn loyalty and connect with other women in the workplace if you're playing those sorts of games. And even if people around you are gossiping or saying negative things, you are in control about what you contribute to that competition, uh, that, that conversation. So if you're going to gossip about someone, get caught saying something really kind. Take that opportunity to stand and support other women instead of knocking them down. It's so easy to bond with other people around saying something negative and going down that rabbit hole, but you have the power to stop the rabbit hole, deflect, and change the topic to something that isn't beating somebody else up. So second one, don't gossip. And the third is a bigger topic. And I just wanna share a quick fun tip with you. So not to buy into stereotypes and specifically the one about how women are more emotional in the workplace. The truth is we, we very well may be, this is not a bad thing to have emotion. In actual fact, I think one of our superpowers as women is our ability to empathize and feel into our decisions. That that ability is actually really great. But here's the thing, emotion in the boardroom, for example, we've all been there in the moment when something's going wrong and you wanna cry. Have you ever done this? You're like, I feel like crying and not only do I feel like it, my body is participating in actually making me tear up. (laughs) That's not good because we know we want to show up professionally. So how do you stop yourself from crying when you want to in a difficult situation at the workplace? Well, here's the trick I learned years ago in the media is squeeze your butt cheeks. So if you feel a cry coming on, just literally squeeze your your glutes and your body will get distracted physically and your tears, you'll be able to push them back down. So I hope that's a fun tip that can help you. And uh, at the end of the day though, don't buy into stereotypes. And if you are emotional, own it and use it to your advantage, but still obviously, of course, you wanna stay professional. Now, what I wanna share with you out of my book, and if you haven't got a copy of this yet, please do go to your favorite book retailer. It's Married My Mom, Birth the Dog, 
how to be resilient when life sucks. <laughs> and it's, uh, you know, don't let the title throw you. It, it actually is all about uh, this mastering everyday resilience and leaning into our big R resilience moments. And if you don't know what that means, listen to the last Facha Friday episode where I explain the difference between the two. So here we go, an uh, excerpt from my book. It's chapter 32, and it's on page 144. It's called Musical Chairs. Who's out? Call it jealousy or competitiveness. Some people step on others as they rise to the top. There is so much abundance in the world. Why bother? Both men and women engage in this combative behavior, But in many ways, society has set women up to be especially prone to the ugly side of the competitive climb. Back in the day, when women were just beginning to be accepted in professional environments, there were only one or two spots at the top that women could fill. This gender prejudice launched a game of musical chairs. The ruthless women who pushed everyone else aside were the only ones left with a seat at the big boys' table. When the music stopped, The last chair would go to the woman who threw the most elbows and kicked her high heels the highest. It was an era fueled by a scarcity mentality. At the root of scarcity is fear. In this case, there was fear that a woman wouldn't make it to the top unless she was the first and only one who was there. I'm inspired by a genuine society where men and women can truly feel supported by each other. We have to stop pulling chairs away when the music stops. Instead, we must start adding more chairs to the mix to invite more people of both genders and various backgrounds to join a bigger table of success. Thankfully, these days, there is so much room at the top, you can claim your seat at whatever table that motivates you. You don't need the old boys network anymore. You can create your own table at the top. So that is an excerpt on, uh, from Musical Chairs, Who's Out, Chapter 32 of my book, Married My Mom, Birth the Dog, How to Be Resilient When Life Sucks. And I think that's a great place to leave it. Happy International Women's Day. Let me know how you are celebrating, and uh, not just on this special day, but on every day throughout the year, and supporting other women in the workplace so that we can rise stronger and break through that that ceiling that is, I believe, shattering, but it's not quite gone yet. Have an amazing day. Don't forget to subscribe. If you love this, please leave a review and tell your friends about it the next time you're talking about podcasting. 